I did, however, uh, speak to a doctor who I've spoken to before. Um, and he was here two years ago. Uh, he's a British specialist. He doesn't want to say his name because he doesn't want to um, endanger any of the colleagues that he was with. He was three months in Gaza and the West Bank, and he was quite a lot of time at Shifa and another hospital uh, in, in Gaza. And he, he contacted me again after within the last few days uh, just to see how I was. And then he reminded me of his experiences in Shifa. And I decided that I would record some of what he said because it is interesting to hear a perspective of an outsider and one who is safe enough to speak. Um, I think you might have that. Should we have a listen to what he had to say? The main point was when I was first asked to work there, I was told there was a part of the hospital I was not to go near, and if I did, I'd be in danger of being shot. Shot? You mean actually shot with a gun? Yes. Was it explained to you why that was? No, but implicit was that it was being used for non-medical purposes. And did you see anything non-medical, or did you <laughs> obey the instruction and stay away? I stayed away, but I saw a few sort of dodgy-looking non-medical characters going in and out all the time. It was a ward leading to a basement. As I say, I didn't go there, so uh, I behaved myself. They would say there could be many other reasons that you would be told not to go to a particular area of a hospital. It's not unusual. Well, I was, I was welcome everywhere else. And as I say, the doctors and nurses there were very welcoming and very kind. And the hushed tones under which this was said was consistent with all the other hushed tones about which Hamas was discussed. You know, people were fe genuinely fearful. I cannot emphasise too much the air of collective paranoia that existed there. He did go on to say that if they were 10% frightened of um, a possible Israeli airstrike, they were 90% frightened of getting onto the wrong side of Hamas. 